This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management with this week's market update. This week on the Street of Dreams, U.S. stocks ended higher Friday after a punishing week of losses across all major indices. Investors welcomed the little green on the screen after this brutal spring sell-off that's left virtually nowhere to hide. This week, data showed inflation is still running hot. Cryptocurrencies dropped dramatically after a so-called stable coin unexpectedly crashed. The S&P 500 on Thursday was flirting with bear market territory, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average posted weekly losses for the seventh consecutive week. It's the longest losing streak since July of 2001. On Thursday, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell acknowledged that getting inflation under control could create a short-term hit to the economy. Thanks, Jay. He repeated his view that further half percentage point increases would likely be appropriate at coming meetings, but said the central bank would consider larger increases if economic data necessitates such steps. Although this week's inflation report showed that price pressures were largely broad-based, gasoline prices actually eased. But prices rose for groceries, dining out, airline travel, and other services, disappointing investors who had hoped that inflation had peaked. What many didn't seem to notice is that several key commodities have been falling over the past few weeks. Aluminum, copper, metals, silver, palladium, and even lumber. So you see, the Fed is raising rates to cool things down, not to put the fire out. And with the recent drop in some key commodities, it appears to me that the Fed is starting to have its intended effect. What might seem like a rare piece of good news for stocks actually came from the bond market this week. The 10-year yield has dropped to 2.93% from a multi-year high of 3.3% hit this past May 6th. Why is this good news? Well, in two recent prior periods, when the Fed was hiking short-term rates in 2013 and 2018, the 10-year Treasury yield peaked at 3%. We saw rates in those years jump from 1.5% to just over 3% before stalling and falling back. This is exactly what has happened so far this year. In both 2013 and 2018, the stock market dropped intra-year but managed to finish higher by year's end. The drop in 2018 was actually 20% intra-year, just like now. So big stock drawdowns are actually normal. Since 1950, the index has fallen more than 20% from its high on 10 different occasions. If we lump in the five cases where it came within a fraction of that mark, America seems to go through as many bear markets as we do presidents. So is this the bottom? Is this the end of the downside volatility? Well, no one can actually know. But trying to time the bottom is futile. But investing in stocks when they are reasonably priced is rewarding, and the market is now cheaper than it was in January and is trading at 17 times earnings, historically a good time to invest in the stock market. In 2013 and 2018, rates peaked and dropped back. We are already seeing signs that growth may be slowing. This suggests that the current rate spike may be topping out like it did in 2013 with a repeat in 2018. And all I can say is I'm a fan and I'm rooting for a three-peat in 2020. Hey, my son, Ryan, and I, we have 68 years of combined industry experience of building low-cost, tax-efficient, goal-based portfolios. For your free evaluation, all you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Hey, this is Bob Payne. I'm the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management.